So here it is, folks, the visual story of an $8,000 dream airplane found in a field. The story should actually defy all standards of how you should buy an airplane. If you look really closely, you'll see all sorts of special touches like the tire laying on the elevator and a virtual tree growing out from under the plane. It's a total mess and I was very excited because it is a 1964 Mooney M20E Super 21. So for those of you who don't know, that means it's a fuel injected engine. It's an IO360 and it has 200 horsepower. So it's above my flight level by a good bit. But the price was right, and as this story unfolds, you'll see maybe what I saw in it and get an idea of why I actually bought a plane in such wonderful condition in a field. As you can see, the bottom of this thing is grimy. The landing gear looks pretty dirty. Everything was just completely covered from sitting in the field and um there's a nice touch there you can see like a bunch of brush almost like a bird's nest up inside of the wing where the landing gear is uh, i was clearly concerned about all of this and inspected it as best i could and um you know kind of had to go on my gut instinct on all of this so things are starting to look a little bit better here after uh getting the owner's permission to look at the plane a little bit more in depth and maybe take off a panel or two. I started in on that and cleaning out all of the brush and just everything around the plane, just so I could even get a look at it and say, what do we got here? Is it even complete? Does it look torn apart? Are there parts missing? What not? Uh, so that first step was just cleaning up and trying to get up up in and under and around the plane. The interior was actually in what I consider remarkably good condition. The seats weren't torn or ripped at all. The carpet was there. Um, if you look closely in this image, you'll see that it's missing something in the dash. And that was actually the uh, Garmin 430 WAS. And um, everything's there to just plug one into, and that's what we're planning to do with it. Um, and uh, But that was sort of a happy surprise that that was already there. So because this thing was just sitting in a field, I really expected it to be completely riddled with um, mice, animals, vermin, critters, insects, whatever. Um, I was just completely shocked when I didn't find any mice in this thing. I mean, I thought I was going to have like a raccoon come out on me, let alone, my, I just thought mice and rats would scurry out of this thing. Nothing was in the plane and there was no evidence of any nest anywhere. As I started to dig deeper and deeper, I couldn't see anything and there's... These are shots of the uh, wing spar as it is right below the, um, the rear seat. And I was, I was impressed. It was starting to look pretty good at this point because this, this airplane wasn't a done deal. I was just at a decision-making point and almost sort of a discovery looking at it and learning a little bit about it, but also just trying to see if I saw corrosion or anything that really was like alarming. These are some pictures of under the dash and the pedals, obviously. And I expected to have like a snake fall out of there or something on my head when I was doing this. I clearly didn't get that. Um, and uh, it all actually looked pretty good for something that had been abandoned in a field for about four years. I think a nice touch is if you look closely at the gauges you'll see that there's water in the bottom of the cage um, on several of them. And that was especially the altimeter and the airspeed indicator looking pretty rough. Obviously, for this kind of price, you're going to expect to have to replace some steam gauges. And, you know, that's all sort of part of it. 
And at this point, again, it's still just investigating. And I'm sitting here thinking like, well, what are the parts values of this airplane, right? Like, in terms of parts, it's probably worth more than it is as a whole at this point. Um, thinking it may or may never come back to life yet. Well, here I am in a field in Elsnore, Alabama. Not much to see here. And I brought me some tools. A weed eater, blower, all for the purpose of getting a good look at this 1964 Mooney. M20E, Super 21. So, I guess we're gonna call this Operation Liberation, and we're gonna see how this shit goes down. We'll see how it all goes, keep you posted. And here are more views of me working around the outside of the airplane, just trying to stay off the ground and how nasty it was with a bunch of pricklers and other things like that. It had a flat tire on the right main landing gear, so I was trying to figure out how that was going to work out. And it looked like it had essentially been de-rimmed um, from sitting in the in the dirt. I had to had to use like a shovel to kind of dig down into the dirt to make a little rolling path to get this thing to move forward and finally start to get it out of the trough it had dug uh, where the where the wheels were. So these images sort of show what I was finding just taking my phone and shoving it around the cowling and taking some pictures. Not being any kind of a certified A&P mechanic, I really wasn't exactly sure of everything I'm looking at. That That makes the story even more unbelievable, I guess, in some ways. For a lot of you but I was really looking for stuff that was out of place missing erroneous uh, just half-baked or torn apart and I was surprised because everything seemed to be there there seemed to be some fresh work with some fairly recent new uh, electric wiring and it all started to make sense about what was under there and it looked pretty good as you can see from some of these side cowling off images everything's there and it's all in place and it's proper and nothing's been adulterated so i was starting to wonder why would somebody leave an airplane like this in a field to let things grow in up and around it and um, that, that story sort of unfolds later on, and I'll explain why I believe the airplane was sort of grounded um, and, you know, why it was... Now, there are a couple reasons, but what's the sort of the main reason? Is there one or is there not? And this was sort of nearing the end of me doing my inspection uh, of the plane before I was getting ready to go buy it. And, you know, at this point I'm thinking like, well... What's the value of a core engine? What's the value of, of, of what's the value of these pieces parts? So it wasn't really even considered of an airplane, a whole airplane at this point, although I was completely fingers crossed hoping it would be, as I think pretty much any normal person would be like, I hope and think maybe this thing can fly someday soon. These are really the last images of the airplane as I had just put the covers back on the, the side cowling, lower cowlings on, um, and was just kind of making up my mind, making my decision about the purchase of this thing. I put it all back together, tied it down, took a picture of it where suddenly you're like, wow, this doesn't look so bad. This looks like a, a nice airplane, um, sitting in a field. And this was at about 12.30 on Saturday. And I'm saying this because the next image is actually like a, f a fun image for me because it was really an exciting, um, exciting time for me. So here I am 
the beaming owner of this Mooney. Yep, I decided to take the plunge and hand the fellow his cash. And there's another reason I'm so excited, because he handed me all of the books that went with the airplane. Yes, you heard that right, all of the logs. I was shocked. I thought it would come with nothing. I thought I was buying basically some parts in a field. I was hopeful that it would be a complete airplane, but I never, ever really considered that I would get the books from from him. Um, he was a super nice guy and um, had a good, fun time talking with him. And, uh, you know, in the process, I forgot the books. We forgot the keys. It was kind of this back and forth, like, oh, yeah, you, got, you forgot the keys. Yeah, let me run back and pick them up. Um, and I thought, keys, this thing, you actually have keys to this thing? Um, you know, when you, when you see the first image of it with the tire hanging out on the elevator, you're like, what a, what a dumpster fire of an airplane and what a rolling hunk of trash aluminum. Like I should have called Reynolds wrap to see if they needed some extra aluminum for this thing. Anyhow, it's already come a long way in my head, and so I was excited, and it really shows in this picture. This was the first picture I took of it in the late afternoon sun from an angle that I thought made it look all pointy and fast and cool looking. And um, that's what this picture is. And then obviously the first thing you're going to do is see, like, will this stuff clean off of it or not? And that's this fun little spot I rubbed clean on the wing to see, oh, it might actually clean up. The verdict was totally out on that, by the way, but it was like, what the heck, can't, can't hurt to try it. Okay, here we are back, and we've liberated the Mooney somewhat. So... We've had a good look at it, and it looks pretty good. Some things pretty ugly, most notably the tanks. And we've got a pretty ugly flat tire here. That's gonna be fun. But the rest of it, especially up under the hood, looks amazing. Sorry about the bounciness. So there it is. I've cleared the trash away from it, looked on the inside, checked the wing spars, they look acceptable, actually better than that. And um, I've tied the plane down as best I, as I could. And there you have it. There's the walk around. The tie down on the left wing here is um, snapped off from the wing spar so that's going to have to be rectified sooner rather than later anyway there it is ugly at the top clean underneath so here's the first flight in the Mooney we're not really getting fast here. We're just getting there. So at this point, the Mooney's been towed across the street to my air park parking spot. And these are the first pictures of it. I'm quite proud it's tied down. I'm thinking it's time to get after this thing and start really digging into it and seeing you know what's here and what's not so here's the mooney looking pretty rough here actually but there's nothing a little power wash can't fix because this is the ugly side oh wait what's that here's <laughs> here's the clean side Little elbow grease, help from a power washer, and 
suddenly we got us an airplane that looks like something. I don't think most people could see through the dirt. It was just dirt. There's no pressure on that and it's cleaning up. Anyway, this thing should clean up pretty good. Just with a little little water, a little pressure, gentle. Very excited. So here it is all power washed off and cleaned up and pretty much dried out. And I'm actually shocked at how well it cleaned up. I did not think this thing would look like this. Never in my wildest dreams did I think it had that good of a paint on it and that it looked this good. So at this point, I'm kind of excited, really excited. And um, it was amazing what the power washer did to this thing. These were some fun pictures to take because all I had really ever flown was a Cesta 172 and I was used to the flap gaps and the, well, or the, the massive gaps on a 172 compared to what seemed like no gaps on this Mooney and you start to see why these things are so slick and why they, why they have a high glide ratio and why they're so efficient because there's basically no gap. I couldn't get a quarter through the, through the gaps. And here's another goofy shot where I still just can't believe how clean this thing cleaned up. And you can see it all shiny and fancy and everything. And here's some pictures of my budget-appropriate, Mooney project-appropriate um, cover. It sort of matches the $8,000 investment of the Mooney and keeps things well in check. But um, I had to make sure that, that I knew what size it was because I knew this thing would eventually disintegrate. And it was really just a drop cloth for me to get up under the Mooney while I was trying to liberate it. So the half worn out 8x10 uh, cheap little... Uh, tarp is, is what we use to cover the top of it and it's actually pretty effective so here we are back again at the Mooney and um, sort of the first time I'm really down here after we transported it over here and cleaned it up and uh, had a punch list of stuff I just wanted to start to get into opening up the battery area looking in it looking in the empennage checking for corrosion just sort of getting a lay of the land of this thing one of the things that I had done a while back was this the tanks had some um, corrosion there's there's something in this tank um, on the pilot side and I don't know if it's fuel I don't know if it's water I'm assuming the worst knowing the Mooney with the wet wing tanks and all that stuff that I've read and I'm thinking it's a mess whatever it is it's not leaking out of the tank though so that could be a really good thing so we'll just have to kind of wait and see how that goes so I've been soaking this thing, and we're going to take a look at I'm going to switch this screen over. I've been soaking it for two weeks, pounding on it, tap, not pounding, gently tapping on it, hoping to get it loose, and I just decided, well, at some point you got to go for it. And uh, I went for it after tapping on it, and there's our end result. So that's going to be ugly. That means we've got to take this out. We'll probably have to replace it. I suspect the other side will be just like that, and it's part of the process. Not to complain about, it's just I'm not going to open that up until I'm ready. Really ready. There you go. On the brighter side, and literally the brighter side, I was just goofing around cleaning the paint, and I cleaned this half of the cowling. I don't even know that you can see that in here. But it sure cleaned up nicely. So if I can get it to look even halfway like that, I think we'll be doing okay. There it is, Mooney update. So here I am going further in dim depth on the Mooney. Here's a picture of the inside of the empennage and uh, just a couple other things. But surprise, surprise, if you look at these pictures, you see I've managed to get that tank lid off 
and I've found that there's, you know, nothing there in the tank. And you can see, most people have probably never seen the inside of what they call a wet wing and how it's finished. So it's kind of cool to go through these images and look at uh, the ceiling on, on the wings and what are the fuel tanks inside of the wing and just have an idea of what that looks like. And uh, this was me just sort of holding the cell phone down in there and click, 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 taking a bunch of little pictures just to see what I could get. And we're going to give you a funny little update on the wet wings here in a minute because, well, it goes back to something I talked about at the very beginning about why this airplane is static. So here are some pictures a little bit closer up of the replaced rubber pucks on the landing gear. So those of you who are unfamiliar with Moonies, they have rubber pucks that are the essentially like the springy shock absorbers and it's great because they don't ever need any maintenance and they last maybe 10 years maybe 12. i'm sure somebody's gonna hammer me for not knowing the exact amount of time but these have been upgraded the uh they used to have more in the earlier models and they have changed that to where there are only there's one less on the main landing gear and one less on the front uh, nose gear, and they they used to have four on the front gear. Now they have three, and um, this is showing you a close up, and you can see some corrosion. It's just surface corrosion on the paint. It's not um, it's not structural, but we're going to look through all of that in detail. Obviously, this is not something to kind of you know just say it's good enough um and then this other picture shows a nicely dry rotted front uh front tire and those have all been replaced at this point we uh that was one of the first things i got tired of pumping up tires and and uh i don't know how we managed to get it across the field with with it out holding without it losing the air but it, after we got it across the field, I could never, ever get it to hold air, which I thought was like serendipitous, almost like, you know, just who would have thought that we would have, it would hold air enough to get it across the field, but then we could never air them up again. So, yep, one more kink and one more thing to do that costs time. So I just put three gallons in the tank and um <laughs> you think it's leaking holy crap yeah those three gallons aren't gonna last but an hour or two at most i was looking for any signs of weeping along the wing over here i see i see none over here and you know that, that's actually working now so we're able to get the able to get the ball broken loose, but that's literally like running. So if you think a Mooney can have leaks only on the wings, I, I don't even know where that's coming from. That's got to be up where where it comes through into the chassis, um, or at the very seam along this seam and leaking down over this cover panel either way tanks are desperate i don't even know that this airplane could be ferried with that bad of a leak so fun little impasse kind of suspected this not a big deal uh, i knew it would be a mess and everything in my research has shown that this is a, a problem with all moonies and um I don't know why, you know, I didn't think it would be any different with this one. In fact, I expected it to be worse, exacerbated. So what I'm seeing here is no surprise at all. Maybe a little worse than I thought, but um, still not a surprise. And the Mooney saga continues. So one of the other things that I noticed when I was looking at the airplane was that the, this is actually before it was even purchased, but I, it was evident that the left leading 
edge of outer edge of the wing had been hit or it had struck something at some point in time or something hit it. Um, and it's probably the worst repair I've ever seen. Um, and, and apparently they were flying the airplane like this. I'm like, wow. Um, so I think I probably could have done a better job of fixing this thing if I had had some aluminum foil and a six pack of cheap beer. Um, and then that's me using the foil and drinking the beer and then trying to cut the beer cans into a better patch because this is the most atrocious patch I've actually ever seen. It's, it's literally some trash patch that you would think is like came out of desperation of trying to fly an airplane out of a jungle to save your life or something like that. I mean, it, this is bad. Um, but it, it, you know, it's in accordance with the price point of the purchase. So now that I've had the plane out at my place and I've had a chance to clean it up, clean up the outside, now it's starting to be time to look at some of these in-depth, uh, you know, what's the real condition of the, of the wing spar, the wings, the, what is this, what does this airframe really look like? And these are some internal pictures of the wing where it was hit. And you can start to see there's a little bit of deformation. They've, they've cut some stuff out. Um, and more importantly, at this point, I have had a uh, proper airframe and power plant mechanic come and inspect the plane. I took all the cover plates off and um, had everything exposed and wide open where he could really take a close look at this thing. And we could start to determine, like, hey, before I go any further, is there corrosion or is there something here that's going to really stop us from from going any further, or expecting that there's a chance that this, pl this plane might actually fly again someday. So, you know, this shows the internal condition of the wings, and, and pretty much this is the condition of the entire airplane on the inside. I was really, really happy to see this. Um and uh he found it to be pretty much the same uh saying his he corroborated that essentially like wow this is surprisingly good better than even some of the planes that he had recently inspected for an annual so i was really encouraged at this point and um we're still dealing with things like okay how do you handle the tanks what's the next uh what are my next steps and we sort of have an idea of it and it's really boils down to like at some point you're going to have to start thinking about um you know is this a go or a no go and i'm thinking the next step is well we're just going to have to probably try to fire this thing off and see if it might start so here we are getting into f actually getting rid of the frustrations of constant flat tires and this airplane looking completely dilapidated and uncared for. So I ordered up all new tires and tubes and um, this is what we found on the one wheel that had been sitting in the dirt for a while and it basically is just eaten away and um, you know the earth won uh, compared to the uh, holdout on the metal. And I guess that's what will happen after a while. Um, moral of the story is don't let your airplane sit in the dirt or have uh, flat tires. <clears throat> Anyhow, if anybody's got a wheel out there, man, reach out to me. It's a main landing gear wheel. And uh, the, the disc is fine, but it's just that section of the wheel is eaten away so badly that um, I can't, I wouldn't even you know, other than an extreme emergency, I wouldn't want to have anything like that on my airplane. And um, so that's what me and the A&P talked about. And I'm on the hunt for another main landing gear wheel. Got a beautiful, sunny winter 
Alabama day of 70 degrees in the sun and we're at Elsinore Air Park 1 AL4 and more loony moony time. Without further ado, here we go. So here's some images of the fuel pump. It's the electronic fuel pump that you can switch on, on uh, from inside the plane. And I was really looking for a place where I could start to get some fuel to the engine and see if all of the systems were intact from this pump uh, forward. Um, you know, what have we got it's isolated up in the engine? And, uh, and I was looking for a place to connect fuel to, um, to get it in, into the engine. And I actually ended up going, um, this is, this is actually the backside, the outlet of the fuel pump. And I ended up going to the inlet of the fuel pump. And, um, surprisingly, actually the fuel pump, uh, was working. And so it turned out to be a good thing to test the condition of that fuel pump as well. But this is just the early stages of getting ready to try to start this thing and figure out, okay, you know, the tanks are shot. Um, how do we get this thing going? Where do we put fuel into it? And um, that was my solution was to take the belly pans off and find the line coming from the, from the tank and connect on to it. All right. We've managed to get the plugs out of the Mooney and we've been spinning it around with some Earl in the cylinders and we've taken some of the bottom panels off under here and we've got a hose hooked up to what will be um, the fuel inlet. So we've got that going. We've got some really fancy battery cables connected here one to the positive and one to the negative and we're getting ready to go live with this here big boy battery and we're gonna see what we can do with this the first order of business is to connect it and see if the dash doesn't start smoking <laughs> from a bunch of mice and rats eating wires. I don't think so. We don't have a lot of evidence of any rodents inside of the airplane, surprisingly. Um, but uh, you just never know. Uh, the hidden stuff is what always makes the problem. Um, so we're getting ready to connect that. And if we do, we're gonna try to turn it over. That'll be step number two. And step number three, we'll see if we can get some oil pressure. And after that, we're going to try to stick some plugs in and throw some fuel to it and see if we can't get this baby to pop off and um, kind of turn it into an airplane rather than a static display. All right, well, we're going to try this. Sorry about the shaky video. Not a videographer. Sorry. You're looking at the grass. Durr. Aren't the positives on? It's tight enough. We're going hot. The negative. Turn it over, dummy. Well, actually, you know what? For the sake of simplicity, we're going to put it on that way. So they're both tight enough. Jingle jangle. Let's see what we get. So if you watch this goofy video, you'll realize <clears throat> maybe the astute observer will, will pay attention to what I didn't do. And it's so funny and stupid because well, there are a couple reasons why. Because I'm so excited, I'm overly excited about the fact that I'm going to turn a key and get some noise out of this thing. Um, and then there's another element. It's a different view from me. You have to realize I'm I'm constantly flying, 
in training with a Cessna 172. And the Cessna is a little clearer in its layout, and um, the Mooney is a little tighter quarters, and it's got little flippy buttons and switches that are quite different from the big red switches that you see um, in a Cessna 172. And by big red switches, I mean the master on-off switch which I actually touch with my hand in the video, but never turn on. It's off, and it's like, well, no wonder nothing's on. The master switch is off, and I just immediately assumed that everything has been chewed through by a rat or something like that. I'm just, like, thinking in my head, like, it's dead. I'm going to have to trace electric stuff. Not my real forte. And um, I just didn't realize it at the time. And it was actually really funny because I was sort of, the stage was set and I was all ready to go. And in my extreme excitement, I overlooked the most fundamental part of it all. Um, there's a great flying lesson in that, of course. And um, it's actually never been forgotten by me. So uh, I sort of acted like it was a car you stick the key in and you turn the key. It's not a car, it's an airplane. And uh, we'll see if we can rectify that here. All right. All right, go ahead, we'll go fuel on. Okay, all right, you ready? Get your Throttle's all the way open. Pump on. Well, we're going to find out. Mag's hot. Can I get a clear prop? All right, we'll go. Well, we clear try. prop. Go ahead, turn her on. Clear prop. It's trying. Good enough, isn't it? Yeah, let's cool down for a second. So that's what's. Yeah, yeah, it's trying. Who knows how dirty those other plugs are. Those top plugs are probably filthy. Okay. Fuel selector, is it off them there? It's bypassed. Yeah, okay. So I'm straight into the main okay. fuel up to the... I, I didn't want any bullshit getting in the way. I didn't want where, some... Where is the fuel pump switch? Right here. Fuel pump switch. Nope, now it's working. Yeah, it worked. Wasn't before. Well, you probably didn't have it all the way in there. All right, clear prop. Turn your pump off. Yes, please. Go ahead. There it is. Okay, turn it off. We're I'm smelling fuel, fuel now. Fuel. So at this point, Everything's right, really starting on. to kind of sound favorable, and it's trying to come on, and clearly I have switched seats to someone who's more experienced than I am at starting planes, particularly fuel-injected planes. And um, so uh, the uh, airframe and power plant mechanic from across the way came over to help me sort of get this started. So these last pictures are of me flying a Mooney for the first time. Not my Mooney, but another Mooney. And um, this is my neighbor at uh, the air park flying me in, in his Mooney. And um, I got a good chance to kind of see what that's like. And wow, is it quite different from a Cessna 172. 
and the speed is very, very different. And um, it was good to see that because it tells me, yep, there's a whole step up in terms of training and preparedness to deal with a high-performance complex airplane. Um, great lesson nonetheless. I appreciated him taking me up. And uh, it only encouraged me further to kind of say, all right, we've got to take uh, take hold of this and uh, really get after the Mooney. So the next video that I'm hoping to post is something about getting these tanks installed and starting this extensive annual process. I've kind of been in the process of getting some of the parts that are that we know we're going to need. And um, that includes every o-ring every redo of the hydraulic flaps and brakes and um, every piece of rubber hose that we can find anything like that and then obviously all the standard stuff so that's where the airframe and power plant mechanic is going to lead that and uh, let me know what needs to be done and i look forward to kind of being there for every step of it and um having a good time with it and learning more about every nut and bolt on this airplane so that I can help uh, understand it and be a better pilot and be a safer pilot. And uh, that's what it's really all about. Thanks for watching. I've really enjoyed making uh, all these little videos that my sweetheart of a daughter has put into a more cohesive format. So thank you for that, Karis.